welcome to our lesson. Now, in our previous lesson, we looked at terms associated with machine, and we went as far as a calculation of mechanical advantage, velocity ratio, and efficiency. Now, how about if a question requires you to calculate the three? How do you go about the question? Let us look at this example. Let us look at one example that encompasses all the three. The question reads, a man uses a machine to lift a load of 650 newtons through a distance of 10 meters using a force of 250 newtons. If the effort arm moves through a distance of 25 meters, determine, determine number one, the mechanical advantage, and we said that mechanical advantage is given by load, load divided by effort, load, and this one you divide by effort, and our load in this case is 650 newtons, and we divide by 250 newtons, and this will give us 2 Point four. Again, you remember that it's not supposed to have a unit because it is a ratio. So that is mechanical advantage. Number two is the velocity ratio. Velocity ratio, which is going to be given by effort distance. Effort distance divided by the load distance. And in our case, the effort distance is 25 meters. And the load distance is 10 meters, giving us a velocity ratio of 2.5. Again, is a ratio of length. Therefore, we don't expect it to have a unit. And lastly, lastly, we want to talk about the efficiency, which is given by mechanical advantage of velocity ratio times 100 percent, which is going to be given by 2.4 divided by 2.5, 
and this one should be expressed as a percentage. And this one gives us an efficiency of around 96%. Now, under normal circumstances, we would expect our machine to have an efficiency of 100%, which is not the case here. So why should uh, efficiency be less than, than 100%? Ask yourself, why is our machine not 100% efficient? And number one is because efficiency is dependent. It's dependent on the amount of friction. between parts of a machine. And uh, number two is that some energy, some energy is lost in form of heat in the course of operating a machine. Of course, there is also some energy wasted in lifting the movable parts of a machine, it's also going to impact on our efficiency. So number three, some energy is lost in lifting a movable parts of a machine. Some energy is lost in lifting the movable parts of a machine. So the three should account for the difference between the efficiency of a machine and 100%. If you have few parts, as few parts as possible are the ones that you're moving or lifting, then you increase the efficiency and the same case applies to when you reduce friction and heat produced in operating a machine. Now, let us go to types of simple machines. Types. Types of simple machine. And on this, we have about six. And the number one is what we call the levers. We have the inclined planes. We have the pulley systems. We have the screws.
we have wheel and axle and we can also have gear systems basically we have six we have the levers inclined planes pulley systems we have the screws wheels and axles and finally we have the gear systems now we want to pick on a few and expound on them and I want to start with the levers and what we want to ask ourselves is what is a lever and a lever it is a rigid body it's actually a rigid body capable of rotating on a point on itself It is a rigid body capable of rotating on a point on itself. They are of different types, all classes. And number one is what we call the first class levers. First class levers. And the first class levers. have the fulcrum between the load and the effort between the load and the effort and most importantly it is also good to note that in these systems the load moves in an opposite direction in an opposite direction relative to the effort that the effort and the load actually move in different directions they move in different directions this is what we are talking about if we have the fulcrum here then we shall have our load here and our effort will be applied on the far end this is the effort this is the fulcrum 
and this is actually the road. Now, looking at the diagram, the load and the effort are in uh, opposite sides of the fulcrum. Now, the effort is supposed to be applied downwards in order for the load to be lifted in the other direction. Now, the distance from the, the fulcrum to to the point of action of the load is what we call the load distance. And then this other distance is what we call the effort distance. The effort distance. Examples of levers in this class is what we call a pair of scissors. You could also have the pliers there and you can also have the shoe horn. The shoe horn also belong to this category. Then we look at the second class levers. It's what we call the second class levers. And for the second class lever, the load, the load is between the effort and the fulcrum. The load is between the effort and the fulcrum. And another point to note is that the load and the effort both move in the same, both move in the same direction. And I will give you something here, or a diagram, to show what we are talking about. If we have our fulcrum here, this is the fulcrum, then somewhere here we have the load and at the far end we have the effort. Now, for the system to work, both the load and the effort must move either upwards or downwards, but all of them move in the same direction. Now, again, we have this distance here, which we are calling the load distance. And we also have the 
Ubana. Watch and bandish it. Sinin later of Yango, Joanna Nifua Tanga. Hm? Well, don't know for Tanga now. I don't know. I don't the Lord with a crown. This is the Lord distance, and then from the fulcrum to where the effort operates, we again have the effort distance both of which should be measured from where we have our point of support. Again, you can see that the load is between the effort and the fulcrum. Now, for the system to work, you either move it upwards or downwards, but the two should move in the same direction with respect to each. Uh, I want to give some examples of simple machines that fall under this category. We have what we call the crowbar, a wheelbarrow is another example, a wheelbarrow. And the third one is what we call the nut cracker. And the nut cracker. They belong to that category. Now we have the last class. We have the last class, which we call the third class. That class levers. Now these ones have the effort between between the load and the fulcrum. They have the effort in between them. And again, for a system to operate in this class, both effort and load should move in the same direction. in the same direction. Now we note that it's only in one case of the first class levers where we have the two moving in opposite direction. In all the other classes, they move in the same direction. Let us give examples. You can give example of a hockey stick, a hockey stick. Another one is a broom. We can also have tweezers. Can have tweezers. And we can have a mouse trap. 
these are some of the machines that fall in this category. Now let us uh, draw a diagram to show how these levers look like. Again, this is our point of support. Then we said that we have the load at the far end. Then somewhere in between here, we have the effort again. Then the distance is also very important. This is the effort distance. And this one here. Is the load distance. Now, before we go to an example involving levers, it is good to note that levers provide zero mechanical advantage, which is to mean that work input work input is equal to work output therefore effort if you multiply the effort by the effort distance, it's supposed to give you load times load distance. And this one is only applicable It's applicable for first class, first class levers. Why do we say that the mechanical advantage is zero? It is because the point of support is at the middle. Support is at the middle, and if the point of support is at the middle, that is uh, now means that the distance from or the load distance and the effort distance are measured in opposite directions. Therefore, you cannot compare one. To the other because now that force is a vector if the system is to balance then the clockwise and anti-clockwise work done should be the same let us draw a diagram to illustrate that now let us put a point of support somewhere there. This is the fulcrum. 
Uh, let us put our load there so that now we have our load distance there. Then we could have our effort there. And again, we have our effort distance. Now, we said that for this class of levers, the load moves in opposite direction with respect to the direction of motion of the effort. And therefore, these two forces are moving in opposite directions. And we said for forces to be equal, they should have the same size, should have equal magnitude or size, and should act in the same direction. Therefore, if you are to compare the two, they are acting in opposite direction and that one rules out the idea of them ever coming to a balance unless the work output is equated to the work input for the whole system. Therefore, if the work mechanical advantage is load over effort and gives us the advantage that this machine brings about in doing more work than the effort. But now that we want to strike a balance, the two have to balance. Therefore, that is why we said that one should be equal to one or velocity, velocity ratio should also be equal to one for the system to balance. Now in general, in general, work input for this system is equal to work output. Work input is equal to work output, which is to mean that load times load distance should be give should give us effort times effort distance. Let us look at examples. Examples. that will touch on a fulcrum. John, has a mass of 90 kgs and Jane has a mass of 60 kgs. They are seated ten meters apart. on a first class level. On a first class level. Now how far, how far Should Jane sit? How far should Jane sit? 
away from the fulcrum. How far should Jen sit? How far should Jen sit away from the fulcrum? Again, we have been told that it's a first class level. Therefore, the fulcrum is somewhere in the middle here. Again, we assume that here, that is where John is seated. And here is where Jen is seated. And we are told that this distance is 10 meters. They are actually seated 10 meters apart. Now this one is 90 kgs and this other one is 60 kgs. We want to find these distances so that we find out how far from the fulcrum should Jane sit. This is Jane and this one is John. Now let us call this distance x and this one should be 10 minus x because we have been told they are seated 10 meters apart. Now if this distance is x and the whole of this distance from here to here is 10 then the other one should be 10 minus x now let us work out their weights for John he will weigh 90 multiplied by 10 and that gives us 900 newtons and Jen will weigh 60 that we multiply by 10 to give us a weight of about 600 newtons but work input is equal to work output in our case here work input is actually equal to work output therefore now for John if we take John to be the load or the effort for that matter, he can be anything, but let us use his weight to calculate work output. Now that this is a machine and we expect it to make our work easier, therefore, his 90 newtons, if we multiply by his distance from the fulcrum, to get the work output, this one should be equal to 600 newtons. We multiply by 10 minus x for, for gen. Now, we open the brackets. This is 900. 900. Newtons. So nine hundred X will give us an equivalent of six thousand 
newtons minus 600 x now we make x the subject of the formula by collecting the like terms 900 x this time will be plus 600 x and that one is equivalent to 6000 newtons 1500 x is equivalent to 6 thousand and we can cancel or divide both sides by 1500 to get 4 therefore x is 4 meters so if Jane sits Ten minus x meters from the fulcrum. That is to mean he will be seated ten minus four newtons uh, meters away, which will give us six meters Posi kidogo Un pos It's a flat supporting surface with one end higher than the other. Higher than the other. And we can draw that. Now, here, we note that we, if we compare lifting the load straight upwards, it is more difficult than making it go through the inclination and that is the advantage that is brought about by an inclined plane. Now, there is an angle here we are, which we are going to call the angle of friction. Angle of friction. And the angle of friction is the largest is the largest angle through which the load can remain the load can remain supported on the incline without sliding back it is actually the angle the largest angle that can support the load on the incline without causing backward sliding of the load and how do we get the angle the angle which you are going to call theta is equivalent to the turn inverse of the coefficient of kinetic friction now for example if the coefficient If the coefficient of static of kinetic friction is 
then theta sorry if it is 0 0.5 then theta will be the turn inverse of 0 0.5 And this should give us the next one is the screw. The screw and the velocity. The ratio of a screw is 2 pi L over the pitch. Over the pitch. And the last machine that we are going to look at is what we call the pulley. The police. 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 <laughs> and it is a wheel on an axle. Which is actually designed to support movement and change of direction. Change of direction. Now we have different types. One is what we call the single fixed. Single fixed pulleys. Then we have the single movable. And then we have the block and tackle. Only system. Now the only difference, or the the only point, that is different from the other machine, is that the velocity ratio. Velocity ratio is equal to the number of threads. Number of threads supporting the load. For example, we could look at this one. This is an example of a block and tackle.
said that the velocity ratio is equal to the number number of the reds supporting number of the reds supporting the load and in our case therefore the velocity ratio of the system here will be given by 4 we have uh, we actually have four the reds that are supporting our load down here therefore we can assume that our velocity ratio is 4 so we do not need to calculate the velocity ratio but just count the number of the reds supporting the load now in the course of your revision you ought to have a few questions in mind to guide you and question number one is or what I'll call number one A is what is a machine no. you can also ask yourself what are the uses uses of a machine you could also go through the terms associated with machines then you could look at the work energy theorem You could look at types of machines and number six, you could look you could look at difference. between velocity ratio of a pulley and a lever. We said that a machine is a device that is used to make work easy. We went through the uses of a machine, but just to recap, it is used to make uh, the magnitude of force a bit high, or to multiply the magnitude of force. You could also uh, use a machine to lift a big load using little effort. You could use a machine to increase the rate of work and to change the direction of force. We looked at terms associated with machines and we looked about at, at about 10. We have the load effort, load distance, effort distance, mechanical advantage, efficiency, fulcrum, and even velocity ratio work energy theorem we equated the work done to the change in kinetic energy we have looked at six different types of machines where we have had levers screws 
we have had inclined planes, pulleys, we have had uh, the axles and even the screws. Now, on the difference between velocity ratio of pulley and the lever, we have said that the velocity ratio of a lever is actually one. In that the work input and work output is the same. Whereas for a pulley system, you count the number of the reds supporting the load. Now that marks the end of forces. And next time we meet, we look at a different concept of motion. Thank you.